There are two ferry crossings from Chanakale to the opposite side of the Dardanelles. You are effectively crossing from the Asian side to the European continent by either taking the ferry to the town of Ejibat or to Kilitbahir. In this video we are going to take a look at Kilitbahir Castle, located by the village of Kilitbahir, from which it gets its name, from the Turkish Kilit Ulbahr, meaning the key of the sea or lock of the sea. The impressive castle here can be seen from the Chanakali side and is impossible to miss if you take the Kilitbahir ferry and the short walk from the ferry terminal. When you arrive on the Kilitbahir side you will find several fish restaurants and a small fishing harbour. It is easy to forget that there is also an old village that surrounds the castle and a particularly good cafe called Kale Cafe just behind the castle walls. The beautifully renovated house by the cafe is also the local centre for culture and arts and contains displays of relics from the First World War as well as ethnographic exhibits from around Kilitbahir. Nearby is the Namazga Tabyasa, a fortification from World War I that we deal with in a separate video. Kilitbahir Castle was built to control the shipping of the Dardanelles. The castle fortress faces another fortification just over the water in Chanakale, which is called Kaleil Sultanie, or by its modern name Chimenlik Castle, from which Chanakale gets its name. Both castles were built by Fatih Sultan Mehmet, also referred to as Mehmet II and commonly known as Mehmet the Conqueror. The castle was built in 1463 at the narrowest point on the Straits. Visitors coming from Ejiabat or from the ferry terminal will pass through the impressive stone gate tower and onto the castle entrance. There is plenty of parking for cars and coaches. The impressive citadel with its central clover-shaped tower dominates the castle grounds. It is the clover-leaf shape that makes Kilitbahir castle unusual. The plans were drawn up by overlapping three circles partially, which many have said was done to symbolise the shape of a key and its name. The walls are not straight, but are arched, as if drawn with a compass and give the castle its unique shape. The seven-storey tower, which is now an exhibition, was built during the reign of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, or Suleiman I. This tall vantage point has a commanding view of the Dardanelles. The castle would have been well armed with a full garrison of Ottoman troops. This heart-shaped tower in the centre of the inner fortress is a magnificent piece of architecture. Visitors can stale the staircases of the outer walls and walk around these impressive fortifications. When we came here some eight years ago, it was basically a shell with not much to see apart from the basic structure. It is quite a different story today. Having been expertly and painstakingly renovated, it provides an interesting insight into Ottoman history. The Sarikula Musese or Museum by the main entrance is a showcase for relics of the Battle of the Gallipoli Campaign. Kilitbahir Castle was repaired and expanded during the dynasty of Sultan Suleiman and the Sarekule was built in 1541. 
The grounds of the castle feature several statues and have been carefully restored with extensive grass lawns which make it all the more impressive. There is a small section dedicated to Piri Reis or Ahmed Muhyiddin Piri, an Ottoman admiral, navigator, geographer and cartographer who was born in 1470. There is also a documentary film which informs you about the castle's history. From the cafe and the cultural arts centre, you can make your way up the hill to the village. You get a great view of the castle again from here, and once you have reached the top of the village, with its intricate narrow cobbled streets and historic old houses from the Ottoman era, you can make your way to the old fountain and the mosque and tomb of Jahidi Ahmed Effendi, which was restored in 2014. If you have a car, then you can drive up the gravel road to the top of the hill and look down on the village and the panoramic view of Chanakali unfolding in front of you. Unfortunately for us, it was a cloudy day when we arrived, but nevertheless, it was worth the short drive. Ejiabat nearby and this area used to be known as Maidos and some of the houses are built with a particularly good quality of Maidos brick. Visitors will see that some of the houses are covered in metal sheeting. This was galvanised zinc sheeting which would have been used by the British during the Gallipoli campaign and left behind when they retreated. Now partially rusty and discoloured, it has stood the test of time and still protects many of the old houses. Locals in Kilitbahir often refer to their village as Kilitbahir, a local Turkish dialect that avoids the pronunciation of the H in the word Kilitbahir. For information on Ejibat, see our next video. 
Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please give us a thumbs up and why not subscribe below. See you next time. Bye for now.